Hi, so, building this thing. Based on feedback we've been getting, I decided to do another video on the, some, of the, um, some of the things you need to consider when constructing this thing. Now, this has caused a lot of interest, and I'm not surprised. It's a really good use of some of the weird science that we do. But you have to moderate your expectations a little bit, perhaps. Because although I used very little ink to actually do this, I do this sort of stuff year in, year out. I'm used to doing it. I can moderate and change what I do in light of the results that I'm getting. It's easy for me. If this is the first time you've done something like this, then the chances are, and the very high chances, you're going to fail the first time you do it. It's just the way it is. It's difficult to acquire any skill. You're not going to do something perfectly the first time. If you expect to do something perfectly the first time, you're just leading yourself to disappointment and you will find yourself getting frustrated about it. Don't have an expectation that you're going to succeed at the first time. You're not. It's just the way it is. I didn't. Nobody does. So if you want to make one of these things, don't expect to use 25 millilitres. It's highly unlikely that you will use 25 millilitres to build this on your first attempt. The chances are you'll ruin your first attempt. What you need to do is practice. You need to practice on little things, get them right, and then go for a big thing. So there's probably no point in you ordering 25 millilitres of ink in an attempt to do this, because you'll find that you won't you'll find that it's pretty frustrating and you will have wasted your time and your money. What you need to do is build a smaller one first. I've done a video where I did a small one, about that size. Have a go at that one first. Make sure you can get that working. When you get used to applying it, and of course I just whacked it on with a roller, it only looks that easy because I've been doing that sort of thing for 30 years. I make it look easy because I'm used to doing it. If you're not used to doing it, and it's the first time you want to do something like this, you need to start small. So make yourself a little one following one of the videos I did earlier on one of those little ones that I made about that big. Make yourself a little one and make sure you can get it working. Try different controllers to make sure that you can link everything together and that you've got everything prepared. Don't just go for the big one first, because if you go for the big one first, you're going to suffer quite a lot of disappointment. Now, even if you're used to doing this sort of stuff, you're going to find little wrinkles that come into it that mean that you're going to have to practice a little bit. So you're probably wasting time buying 25 millilitres of this ink, because that's enough to do that board. You probably won't be able to do it. Now, there are a lot of um, considerations to take into account when doing something like that. That board has a certain amount of absorbency. I don't know really what it is. The day that I did it on, the air had a certain amount of water, and that will affect the absorbency of that. So when I painted on it that particular time, it sucked in the moisture. Because we're talking about such a small amount of moisture, even a few percent variation, even painting it slightly slower than I painted it, is going to have an effect. If it has an effect of a milliliter or so, you're not going to have enough to finish the port. You're only going to get that kind of result with set, repeatable conditions that you can do again and again and again. Chances are, if I repainted this uh, on a sunny day, I'd use 30 milliliters, 35 milliliters, I don't really know. All I can really report is when I painted this one and it was mid-afternoon on a cold day, that's what it took. If I were to paint it again, it probably would take something different. Now, when I first painted this, actually the resistivity was too low. It was too conductive. I had to modify it to bring the conductivity down into the region that I wanted it to be. That's one way of approaching it, but actually it's a bit of a drag. So the first thing you're going to do if you're planning on doing lots of these, or even just one of them, is you're going to have to mess around with the ink to find out what kind of conductivity it's got on the surface that you're going to apply it to. And you need to practice to your painter square and see what change in conductivity that you actually get. Now, I'm saying all this stuff to moderate people's expectations because a lot of people want to build these things and I don't want a lot of people to have failure building these things. 
but I want your expectations to be realistic. There's no point in thinking you're going to knock off one of these in five minutes flat if you've never done it before. There's no point in thinking you're going to do something reproducible time and time again if you've never practiced it. Even manufacturers will do trial runs of things to make sure that they get the whole thing right before they go into a full production run. Nobody expects something to work straight off the first time. So if you buy yourself enough ink just to do one of those, you're probably dooming yourself to failure. Now there's nothing wrong with buying a tiny amount of ink. By all means, buy 10 millilitres. Uh, I think the smallest we sell it is 15. You buy it at 15 millilitres. But if you buy it at 15 millilitres, then what you're expecting to do is some practice. And the first thing you need to do is some practice. Don't jump straight in there. This is like trying to become Michelangelo by never having picked up a pencil. So moderate your expectations a little bit, guys, and you will have success. Don't moderate them and you will have failure. Anyway, I hope this helps a little bit on some of the construction stuff. Thanks very much for watching.